Uh, greetings, everybody. This is Ashmedai from Melakesh, and you're listening to Met Al Metal. At the 28th of March, Melakesh are coming to Israel to perform at the Gagarin Club, and we, with us in Metal Metal, is Ashmedai! Ashmedai, the lead singer of Melechesh and, uh, and the, the, the band Melechesh. This guy uh, started it like ages ago and we didn't have them performing here for like at least 15 years even though we had them on our show but they didn't perform here and we're gonna ask this guy why? Why didn't you perform here? Why? For 15 years? Uh, it's not 15 years, it's like 11 years I think. It's Never almost mind. 15 years! This thing, somebody's, somebody's, gonna, somebody's gonna listen to the podcast in four years and it's gonna be accurate. All right. Don't be, uh, yes. So, so, uh, so for 11 years. We're gonna talk, uh, talk about uh, wh- what you did in these 11 years and everything, but also we're gonna mention, of course, Enki. Which is uh, a, an amazing record, which we are listening to in repeat all, over and over again on our cars and in our other things that plays music. And, and we just think it's amazing. You get uh, uh, only reviews of like 8 and 8.5 everywhere. And uh, it's amazing. I think we think it's probably your best work ever. What do you think ever. about it? Um, yeah, it was a very hard album to make, actually. I think it's the hardest album we've ever made. Uh, it was almost traumatizing making it. Uh, but now I like it. When I listen to it uh, with rested ears, I like it a lot. It I came mean, out the way you want it? Uh, better even. Yeah. Yeah, really. I didn't expect it. Uh, I didn't expect this result. So uh, I couldn't ask for more, to be honest. Very good. We're going to come back to you right after we're going to listen to this song. How is it called? Uh, the first song in Enki, which is called Tempest, Temper, and Lil Enraged, which is pretty much uh, one of the best songs, if not the best one, which is a great way to begin a record. And uh, this riff is just fucking amazing. Melakesh, uh, Melakesh, 28th of March at the Gagarin, and we're going to start this shit right now after a few drums and like a few sounds, blah, 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 blah. Okay, shut up. Okay.
Melech, it's Melech. fucking amazing. Melech. And we listened to the first song uh, of uh, the album Enki, which just came out and is uh, pretty amazing. And everybody says it's the best thing ever. And we're sitting down we with Ashmedai. So. Ashmedai, what is Enki? It's a CD. No, no, who is Enki? Who is he? <laughs> Enki, uh, okay, when you look at it from a Sumerian mythology point of view, it's the god of the gods, god of the earth, and the creator of mankind. A lot of biblical stories take borrowed their uh, fairy tales from uh, Sumerian mythology. In Mesopotamian mythology, it's known as Ea. And uh, we don't really use the exact literal meaning because there's this whole Anunnaki theory that these ancient deities were simply more advanced people that came and helped spur uh, civilization through... Uh, science and genetic uh, modification and what have you and it sounds a bit outlandish but if you think about it it's not impossible you know so uh, that's another way of looking at the album because we really play around with metaphor as well you know the whole album is about duality and since the album starts with the song Enlil that's his brother and he's kind of trigger happy he has short temper mm-hmm. and uh, He's always willing to kill people. For example, that story of Noah from the Bible is borrowed from Mesopotamian mythology. Uh, there was a, a guy called Atrahasis, and um, uh, Enki liked him a lot because he's the creator of mankind. Anyway, uh, the gods were annoyed with these people, with people, so they wanted to annihilate them, especially Enlil wanted to do that. So he wanted to make a flood. Mm-hmm. And Enki warned him, you know, to make a boat or some shit and get out of there. So as you see, there are a lot of, uh, it, it's, it's a very rich context. And uh, a lot of the future mythologies and religions borrow from this, but also there are hidden meanings there about the origins of mankind. That's something very fascinating. I mean, not from a Darwinian point of view, because we all know there's that evolution, but from a civilization point of view, how they got advanced and stuff like that. So that pretty much... The whole album kind of talks about these kind of concepts, but also reinterpretations of things. And I, I always put hidden meanings in the lyrics. Some of them are like double meanings, like what's happening today even. And some of them, are, there are messages there, like the palm, the eye, and lapis lazuli. So it's a strong message from myself to uh, some vermin out there. So, you know, when I write lyrics, I, I get into like, a, it's, it's a trip. It's a, it's a real privilege, actually, because it's like a trip, you know? And I just play around with words, and I start th- seeing things and writing about them. Hopefully, the listeners would also be enjoying that ride, because it's like a ride. There are some songs with messages, like I said, the, uh, the Palm, the Eye, Lapis Lazula, and uh, Lost Tribes is a strong message. Lapis Lazula? Lazula. It's, it's not Madonna's song? Lapis Lazuli. No, no. That's, no, that's, oh, that's, okay. that's Spanish for la 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 bonita. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, Lapis so... Lazuli is a stone, man. What's wrong okay. with you? Wait, 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 wait. Because we get, you're we'll not get explaining you the lyrics because wait. you want me to understand the yeah, way I, I understand I, it. I ask for order in the, okay. in the, yes, in the studio. So, so the next it's one. It's a walkout. In the, it's a walkout. <laughs> it's a walkout. The next one, next one in, the, in the record in Enki uh, is called The Pendulum Speaks. Yeah. What is that about? Duality. The pendulum goes left and right. Mm-hmm. And it's about, again, trying to discover who are the ancient ones, who are the uh, creators of mankind. So it's, it's a reflection. It's a, a song about reflection. I know who are they. <coughs> Enki. You told us. Yes, but who is Enki? Ah. The, the Anunnaki. Who are they? There's Enki some... is they? No, the Anunnaki are they. Anunnaki. Enki is one of them. Literally, there's some crazy writers that carry a sitchin. It's pretty cool. It's, I call it pseudoscientific, you know? I just like the principle of it, that they came from another planet to Earth, and there were creatures living here, humans, I mean, and they um, just advanced them. But, but is that all related to all these things that we see in, in, in fiction, like, I don't know, sci-fi movies and whatever, and when you see all the, the Egyptian, if you take that mythology, and all the Stargate? And, pretty you know, much, yeah. Pretty much. Pretty like, much, that's what it is. And even yeah. the film Prometheus, uh, I, I, even sometimes in interviews, if it's not really a, a metal magazine, but it's like a national newspaper I'm talking with, then I'm like, you know, just picture the, uh, the, the first scene of Prometheus. Mm-hmm. It says a lot. I mean, uh, and it makes sense. I mean, scientists say it's a scientific impossibility 
that there aren't intelligent life in the world, in the universe, taking the size of the universe and the formulas that it takes to create intelligent life. So um, it's a scientific impossibility. Doesn't mean that there's 100% proof. It's just what does it take to have other civilizations out there? You know, the, the, the world is big, planet Earth is tiny, and it's really amazing when you think about it. What lies beyond? I like X Files. Now, right. what's the next uh, song? Uh, so, we're going to listen now to The Pendulum Speaks, uh, the second song from Enki by Melaka.
Ramesh, uh, with us in the studio, we have uh, Ashmedai, and uh, we're talking about uh, the amazing uh, album, which I'm holding right now in my arms, Enki, and I wanted to say something about the artwork. So, Actually, you were holding it in your hands, in my not hand, in your arms. Not in my arms, because I can't... Ha- hey, but I don't have the... Hey, I would just with my arms. Hey, okay, I'm holding it in my hands. <laughs> Fuck yeah. off. This is not my native language, yes? I don't uh, yes. speak uh, very good English. No. English very, very well. So, so, so... Um, <laughs> So, uh, Melechesh uh, uh, came out with this new record with this kind of uh, really interesting uh, artwork. So, I see here the Chamsa, which is uh, some kind of a sign that uh, we know from uh, a lot of houses here in Israel. Yeah. It uh, brings good luck. Yeah. Uh, why did you use the Chamsa here? Because all of Melechesh's success is due to luck. Luck. Pure luck, yes. no talent. Just luck. Come on. Come no, on. Come on. Uh, come on. Talking. You're, no, a, no, no, you're no, a little talented. Never mind. Never mind. Never yeah. mind. Um, no. Um, the thing is, um, the symbol is used in many cultures in the Near East and Middle East, but actually it, it also comes from Mesopotamian mythology, and it is to ward off uh, negative energy. That's the original mm-hmm. uh, Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Idea. So we wanted to put that uh, on the cover. Uh, as like an, say stop to the bad guy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, to the negative energy, yeah. whatever it is. Um, but also like it's, uh, I'm celebrating the cultures of the Near East. Don't forget the whole cover has various themes from various eras. So it's an inclusive, not exclusive. Uh, just trying to uh, aggregate everything from our... region and produce it as a picture collage you know what I mean mm-hmm. so yeah it, it is a symbol that wards off negative energy uh, it's been misunderstood with times and it got popularized in different cultures and it, different cultures within the Middle East so uh, I thought why not use it it's a kind of like a bold move since it hasn't been really really used before on the cover of an album and a metal album yeah, especially metal album, yeah, yeah. And it relates to the song, uh, The Palm, The Eye, and Lapis Lazuli. So uh, we always try to put some uh, lyrical aspects from the album into the cover. So it, it kind of tells a story. That's a fucking great cover. We really like it. So uh, what we want to talk about now is actually the next song on the record, which is called Lost Tribes. Now, you had the great Max Cavalera, uh, which is known no from like, all, almost all the bands in the world are with this guy now, uh, having, doing now Kill or Be Killed with the guy from Mastodon and, and, uh, and uh, Dilger Escape Plan. In the same year, having uh, another uh, Cavalera Conspiracy album coming out, doing Soulfly at the same time, still doing some Sepultura songs and shows. Crazy, busy guy. How did you get to work with this guy? And how did, did you actually meet with him and work with him? Or is it one of these things that you sent him something, you sent it to you back? Because people do these things well, also what, these days. What happened is, uh, it was quite a surprise. We're at some open air festival in Germany. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're sitting backstage. And he just came and said, guys, I uh, really like Melkesh a lot. I just wanted to meet you guys. And apparently, I, I, I even read in some magazine, he thinks the Epigenesis is one of the best extreme metal albums ever written. Oh, my God. That's, that's amazing. Pr- that's a very nice compliment. That's awesome. And then that same night, um, he dedicated Roots, Bloody Roots to Malakesh. And there's like tons of people, like 10,000 people or something. Was, was, I think that was a really ace move. And then he was wearing our like hooded sweater on the photo shoot of Killer Be Killed. And he was wearing the T-shirt of Melkesh on the video clip of Killer Be right. Killed. Right. And on like Golden, God Award, Golden Gods Awards, he goes with a Mal- another Melkesh T-shirt. He's How always... many T-shirts does he have of you, man? Like four. <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't yeah. even know you have four. <laughs> yeah, we have like maybe 50 or 60. <laughs> But I, 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 I actually don't have um, the majority of the shirts we have. I don't have them. I have like three Melkesh shirts. I, I thought I had all of them, but I found out I don't. I guess I give away the last one yeah, thinking yeah, yeah. that I have another one in the closet, but then I don't. Because Max Cavalera got them all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he's really a class act. He really likes extreme metal. Uh, his wife, Glory, is amazing. Um, so we were talking about collaborating, and uh, he said, you know, maybe we can work together in the next Cavalera conspiracy or something. But our album came first, and I needed a thrash kind of vocals. In, a song, in the song Lost Tribes. So who better to ask? You But know? you already had the lyrics written and everything, and then yeah, you yeah, thought the about song, it? Yeah, yeah, the because, song was done. Because it's kind of funny, because always when you listen to a Max Cavalera like, song, 
it, it always will have the word tribe or the word rise in, in it. Oh, and, yeah. and, and they're both of I it know. are in the song. Uh, and I'm like, okay, me, so he were... probably wrote the lyrics. No, That's what no, I thought. No, not at all. Because actually, we didn't even think of, the lyrics were written before that. And uh, I remember I even mentioned that to Gloria. I'm like, look at the chances that the song Lost Tribes, I wanted Max to sing. Look, look at the chorus. It has words like, uh, look beneath the roots. Rise, right. Lost he uses right. He uses rise like, all the time. He I don't know, man. It was uncanny. It was like those. Uh, it, it, it was meant to be. That's you know, weird. It's, it's I, I, to be. I just, I just, I love pic- these kind of stuff when they I just pictured in the band. it as Max yeah. coming. Okay, if you want me to be in the record, you have, to have the word rise. rise. I have the word rise. Three times. <laughs> at least five times. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't like that. And the cool thing about it is, uh, well, he was in uh, Arizona. We were in Greece recording, and he's so busy. He was on tour, and literally they went between. Two tours or something they had a few days off they drove two hours to a studio to record it and I, I found that very cool of them and uh, finally we got to hang out again together in uh, 70,000 pounds of metal she's amazing yeah really that's cool to go there. next time you yeah go, and he dedicated the song tickets, to us give us tickets, yeah? <laughs> okay <laughs> anyway, it was cool it was really cool and, uh, yeah turned out well okay so lost tribe the third song off out of Anki of Melech Ash
יש לי, יש לי, יש לי. יש כי? לא, אין כי. אהההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההההה
all the vocal lines and vocal arrangements and the drums. That's a little bit different from other bands that I write the drum patterns, but I don't play drums. I'm like a drum coach in a way, you know, like when you see a a, a sports uh, game like basketball or football, there's a coach who's not necessarily going to be slam dunking, yeah. but he knows the strategy and how it's done. So I, I write drums uh, according uh, to uh, the, you know, uh, human capacity. I, I it's a, It goes hand in hand with writing the guitar riffs. You know, I'm hearing the drums at the same time. And then I do the pre-production demos and give it to the guys. And I always do appreciate participation from people in the band. It's not like I don't let anyone write or anything. Uh, I love it if they do. And it, it just takes a long time. It took a while for uh, Moloch to get to do that. We had an ex-bass player, uh, Al Hazred, who was also a guitar player. He was also a composer. He wrote some riffs. Uh, it, ta- it takes a while. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I do pretty much everything. And the proof is... We keep on changing lineups, but the albums are getting better and better. I mean, I I can't explain it. I mean, maybe it's I don't know. The skill is getting better. I don't know, man. I mean, as long as everybody's cool and the atmosphere is good, the music will be good. Or maybe it's like the South Park thing. Uh-huh. That as Tell we me. go ahead, then the music changes, and when he, we look back, it's always better. Yeah, well, uh, I tell Except you something. Except for Metallica. Well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, no, to be honest with you, um, for me, every song and every album of Malkish is different. Mm-hmm. We're not a streamlined band that, you know, has that formula, blast beat, uh, chorus, bridge, blast beat, you know what I mean. And I don't like saying this is our best album. I never, ever said that, actually. It's a good album. They're all good albums. I love them all. Uh, but it's representing... my psyche at the moment. So I relate to it, obviously. Let's go and listen to Metatron and Man, which is one of our definitely favorite songs. That's an insane songs. song. Metatron and Metatron. Man. Metatron. Is he one of the Transformers? Meta- no, that's Megatron. <laughs> and I, I, I know. I love it. I love it because I like Transformers and G.I. Joes and stuff. I liked them when I was a kid. Who is Metatron Man? No, it's not Metatron Man. <laughs> Metatron man it's Metatron man <laughs> need it to let's listen to it and, and you'll explain afterward Metatron Met- dude Metatron, Metatron and man Mediterranean dude <laughs>
מטטרון, and man we have the main man from מלך אש, השמידה היא in the studio, let's give it a clap, clap, מלך אש, מלך אש, very great, fucking awesome, awesome having you here again, action, okay so מטטרון is a really good song and it's a very strong transformer, we wanted to know what is it really speak about, like מטטרון and man, the song. Um, it speaks about, um, like you said, the head of the Transformers. Mm-hmm. But the, the bad guys, the Decepticons, not, no. not, uh, not Optimus wait, wait, Prime. Which one? Oh, Optimus not Prime, Prime is the good no. guy, We're so it's about Ma- bad Megatron guy. is yeah, the bad guy. Yeah, he's talking about Megatron with, with uh, a spelling mistake. But that's the old yeah, joke. So it's spelling Megatron, Metatron. Metatron. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get it? Okay. Yeah, anyways, uh, so yeah, what, what, is, what does it talk about? Well, Metatron is, th- that's the thing. Um, is one of those oh it's the thing that you connect to the guitar and you get it tuned that's a tuner uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's called a tuner oh right okay. all right um metatron is uh, hey, when you get cancer and you get all the eye that's a tumor that's a tumor come on let the guy uh, you started it. himself yeah it's a walkout it's a walkout let's get out of here that's okay. it call my manager it's a walkout <laughs> so. i can't do I, i can't work like this boys <laughs> okay metatron all right okay. um metatron <laughs> is a chief angel within you know religious context and the kabbalah and what have you but but again i say this is a reinterpretation that he's not dad but one of the anunnaki and he's been annexed by religion and he's misunderstood uh, because there's something the concept called the nephilim the fallen ones and wait the nephilim, nephilim. are not like these huge guys yeah they fell nephilim even from hebrew nephal yeah so and uh, the nephilim never fell i say in the lyrics Mm-hmm. That means they didn't they came uh, by themselves mm-hmm. because actually they're not angels. They're again part of the Anunnaki. you know that's their reinterpretation perhaps. Mm-hmm. you understand me. Again, they were part of these uh, extraterrestrials. So technically when we look at all these albums you created, it's all like when you look at the covers and you listen to to the, the words you think about like ancient uh, stuff, but technically you're actually talking about like futuristic stuff. Both, yeah. yeah. It's part of my character as well. I mean, if you ask Moloch, he always looks at my computer or screensaver is always like a big planet or the cosmos or a spaceship. Mm-hmm. I, I always liked that as a kid. I mean, I wanted to be an astronaut. I turned out to be just an ass. <laughs> <laughs> so now I got to work about the knot. The knot. Um, but seriously speaking, it's, it's, a, it's, it's correlating the ancient and the modern, you know, like ancient technology, put it that way. It's something that fascinates me because everybody thinks... As time goes forward, things get more advanced. Not uh, necessarily. There's a degeneration. Our, our past can be some other cultures, yeah. like very advanced time. Here, here. Here's a fine yeah. example. We used to have less time traveling from the United Kingdom to New York with the Concorde. We de- degenerated. De- uh, uh, devo- is that a word, actually? Devolved. Yeah, De- devolved. You know, not, yeah. yeah, not evol- uh, evolved. Yeah. Uh, the planes take longer because uh, simply they're, the, they're not using the Concorde airplanes anymore. Mm-hmm. It used to take like three hours or something to go to New York. So you see, when time goes forward, it doesn't mean that everything goes forward. Look at the societies, what's happening in the Middle East. People are, many people, not everybody, are going backwards, not forward. Yeah. If you looked at the Middle East uh, 20 years ago, It wasn't more primitive, it was more advanced. Yeah, People pla- were more chilled li- out. Pla- places like Iran, for example, which was yeah, very well, advanced. The pre-revolution in yeah. Iran was a very normal, yeah. relaxed mm-hmm. place. You can go for a good time, do some business, get an education, make some music, uh, go out at night. You know, and uh, now if you want to play metal, you have to do it in a cave where nobody well, knows. And, something. you know, there are people beating up some women who don't dress according to a certain... Mm-hmm. So you understand, it, time forward doesn't mean things go forward. So... Think about this multiplied with thousands of years. Who knows what, what, what was going on yeah. then, you know? Uh, there are periods where um, technology, like industrial age, just goes up, and then there's periods of degeneration. Destruction is easy, yeah. right? Yeah, as, as you said, like the example you used before with Noah. Yeah. Who said that, like, 5,000 years ago, there yeah. was... N- There wasn't something more evolved than right now. Exactly. And it started over, like reset the whole exactly. system. Now, let's talk it. about this Noah thing. For example, when they said two of each, 
does it really have to be a giant animal? Maybe it's just the DNA strips in a laboratory. Maybe the Ark is a spaceship. No, yeah, or may, yeah, exactly. Maybe there was just the DNA of all the animals before a calamity. For example, is it impossible? No. I mean, if there's a calamity now, that's what they would do to preserve life. Yeah, so, but what if this whole thing never happened? It's just a story. Is that yeah. no! not rational? No, 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 no. Exactly. It could be <laughs> just a story. Make that we take it in a laboratory. Dude, it, no, no. dude, uh, dude yeah. the Noah story is taken from the Mesopotamian story, the says, Sumerian yeah. story, right? Mm -hmm. But who knows? What if the uh, en uh, Enki tells Atrahasis, who's maybe a scientist, like, Uh, please gather some DNA. We'll go around, gather some DNA before this calamity mm -hmm. of all the creatures. You understand? I mean, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. a, it, it's quite rational. Mm -hmm. More rational than putting fucking elephants and snakes and crocodiles on, on a ship. Yeah. And, Why? And Because they crap. Penguins. How the fuck would you get a penguin, man, when you're in the Middle East? Yeah, well, the problem that I think that inside the... The, the polar bears. The, the ark... The lions will eat the elephants and no, the ducks. Not necessarily. The ducks. In the zoo, they don't eat each other. It's a good time for a song because we're really close to the end of uh, this. And you have a lot of collaborations in, the, in, in that album, except for the one we spoke about with Max Cavalera. So you have also... Besides, yeah. Besides. Yeah. Besides that. Yeah. Uh, my English is very small, yes? Yes, you I know. You would not correct me. No problem. I come from here... You and me, Hamburger. We, you and me from Super same. Sol. <laughs> Burger King. We are from the same yeah, Burger city. King is in Hebrew. I like I it. I was also born in Jerusalem. You Jerusalem don't come to me. Jerusalem is the best. You don't teach I love, me. I, lo I love Jerusalem. I don't want to interrupt what is going yeah, on. Yeah, okay, okay. So we're talking, we're talking about uh, uh, the next song is The Palm, The Eye, and <laughs> Lapis Lazuli. Which Lapis is Lazuli. Ta. And it's, it's also with uh, it's, it's a also walkout. it's a walkout. <laughs> it's also with uh, uh, with that rock piano. Yeah, which is also uh, it used to be in uh, in uh, in Anthrax. And also is the uh, guitar player of uh, Volbeat, which is huge these days. Huge. So uh, yeah, Rob is a cool yeah. guy. He contacted me during those uh, MySpace days when Emissaries came out, talking about like maybe we could collaborate or MySpace days. It was like for three days. <laughs> fucking hell, man. It worked like crazy for three days. Till the spammers <laughs> took over and killed yeah. it. Um, anyway, uh, he, he's like, we always talked about collaborating and we've always been in touch. Actually, when I was recording the Epigenesis in Istanbul, he was there with the big four when there was Anthrax, Metallica, Slayer, Megadeth, and he put us on the guest list. So it was cool to be around those bands and check out the gigs. I checked out a few songs of each band and then went back to the studio because we're in the middle of mixing. And, you know, we kept, in touch and this was it that was the time we were chatting while i was in the studio actually he's like how's the recording going i'm like cool just i'm working on this solo i need a solo here like i can do it and uh, because uh what many people might not know he doesn't sell himself as a great as the virtuoso guitar player but in fact he's one of the best guitar players out there mm. he doesn't show off But he's really one of the best guitar players. Very agile. And does, that's does exactly he have, like, what I need. Does he solo stuff? Uh, yeah, that's what he did. He did a really... No, I don't think he has. I don't know. Not I don't released. Know. I don't, no, I don't yeah. think so. But he's so good, man. And I thought, okay, I want a guy agile like him to play on this rock-oriented song and to do like a, a rock-oriented heavy metal lead, which something is not... I, I don't do it that way. You know, I play differently my lead. So, uh, yeah, happily he did it. As a, a matter of fact... Great yeah, he was there. fucking on tour... with Volbeat in the States and he got his uh, he didn't have recording stuff he went to the store bought some stuff start practicing and then as soon as he arrived to I think New York or something he recorded it so again he, he made a big effort to make it happen and I, I respect him for that you know and you said that if it wasn't for him it wouldn't be sounding like this the guitar solo of, of yeah. course not well so, so the name of the the, name, the, the palm, palm the eye and Lapis Lazuli which the palm and the eye is again talking about that Hamsa sign which we spoke about uh, that also appears on the artwork itself Melakesh from Enki goes like Lapis that Lapis Las Bonita
yeah. לפיס לזולי. This was not a collaboration of a cradle of filth and orphan land. This was מלך אש from אנקי. Very good. Do you Stuff. like it? Uh, uh, do you like it? Uh, we have a in the studio. Yeah, they got some good songs. And the uh, Cradle of Field. How I is like, that even uh, led to Cradle of Field? Uh, yeah, I think I they, if you take them both together, it's this song? Yeah, That's what I think. So. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> yes, I'm kidding. Get out of here. <laughs> it's a walkout. It's out. a walkout. <laughs> no, uh, Cradle of Field, to be honest, um, I only know the first album. The principle of evil made fish. Yes, and it's a good album, it's but good. I never really paid attention. You'll be shocked how many well-known extreme metal bands I never listened What to. What black metal okay. do you like? I, I, don't, I don't call it a band. I call it an album. Mm-hmm. You know, which I think one of the greatest releases is Mayhem, The Mysterious Don't Satanus. Okay. And uh, the first three or four Immortals I like a lot. Very you don't good. like their newer stuff? No, it's good. Sons of Northern. Oh, I like, I like all of Immortal stuff, mm-hmm. but I mean, I'm trying to nicely say I'm not listening to a lot of uh, extreme metal. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what are you listening to? Which is metal? Oh, shit. Let's see. Uh, metal. I... Let me... The New Hate. The New Hate. Yeah, yeah. I listened to it. I liked it a lot, man. It was, it was great. Really, yeah, great it's a really good album. Uh, what, what else extreme metal I listened to? Crusade the Zero. New, uh, the, yeah, Crusade Zero. Yeah. Uh, I listened to the new Master's Hammer. Fucking hell. It's one of the greatest bands in the world, We don't man. fucking know it, man. Get out of here. Sorry. Get the it's fuck out of here. <laughs> it's a walkout from you. You guys don't deserve to do metal. Metal, <laughs> metal, met. I don't like a lot of extreme metal. It's bad. It's not good. That's all. It's so what kind not of music good. do you like? It's bad. It's cut, paste, okay, and it's but, but not you, good. Okay, but you have some inspirations. On the new Napalm so. Death is great. Oh, Napalm that's Death. an awesome album. You understand? Album, yes. I'm just trying to think right now. Yeah. The new Enslaved is great. Uh, yeah, it's good. Mm-hmm. It's very good. Uh, mm-hmm. Accept. Very good. I like Accept album. I like... Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Judas Priest was so-so. Uh, so, so. I didn't really like it. It's even still Judas even Priest. only one song. Yeah, but it's just because we have a lot of respect for Probably, everything they did. Yeah. If they'd only released Redeemer of Souls, Probably. nobody would listen to it. You know? Maybe, maybe. Yeah. If there they didn't some, have no, the no, fucking there, legacy. To, there are some good songs. Yeah, some good songs. So, so I, I listen to a lot of diverse music and a lot of the old hard rock and heavy metal and psychedelic rock. But, yeah, I mean, when it comes to extreme metal, many bands are delivering bad songs. albums or they're not bad they're correct they're by the book correct mm-hmm. replica Nothing, uh, replica yeah. of previous releases so I mm-hmm. just listen to the original releases mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. like the, there's the replicas of morbid angels there's the replicas of the original suffocations there's replicas of the dark throne replicas of the mayhem repli- you know I, I don't have to hear the replica while I can you know I don't like replica watches mm-hmm. also I don't remember I mean like it, it's it's not fair for the good bands because you Uh, I get to miss out on great bands due to the vast volume of not good releases. Uh, I think uh, Tribulation did a great album. We're going to be on tour with them. And the new Keep of Calcin is good. I didn't hear the new one yet. It's very good. Yeah, They're I, a skillful I heard, band. I heard They're a good composer. Yeah. Uh, They went to the composer. Eurovision. You know that? <laughs> I know, I know. We <laughs> toured together. Awesome. We toured together in, uh, I think, 2000. 2012 and we're gonna be touring together in two months yeah 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 you, know, yeah. you have a, a joint tour with keep of class so we saw you guys uh, I think it was hellfest or something mm. like right in the morning was mm-hmm It, it was, was early, but and we it thought was there were, crazy. It, it was, was crazy. so early we thought there would be nobody and the place was completely packed. the entire tent and people were re- like it was like a football match. I can I tell remember. you one thing about that show that I remember. I went there. And I was totally stoned. I don't know why I woke up and I smoked something straight in the morning. And then I went to the show. And when I came up back to the tent, they asked me, all the people that stayed in the tent because it was yeah. really early, were like, how was it? And I was like, listen, I've done many things in my life. But if I'm going to hell, it was only because I went to that show. That show was crazy. fucking crazy. Dude, well, five, ten minutes before the show, it was like kind of quiet. There's nobody there. I'm like, oh, shit. And then the guitar player goes on stage and I hear like a football match. Like, Wah! the crowd, you know? And it was like... Everybody was there. It's a fantastic show, yeah. Malachi show uh, the closest thing you're gonna feel to hell and it's going to go down 28th of March and uh, we're gonna wrap this shit up thank you to Ashmedai yes yeah, thank that you was very much with for us again. for uh, always, this whole uh, show a pleasure to have you here yeah and, uh, and we're always. gonna see you there yeah of course and what uh, are we gonna listen we're to gonna right listen now? to the title song uh, from that uh, album Enki uh, um, and then it says divine nature awoken DNA. 
DNA. Your DNA. Oh my divine, God, nobody knew it. We got a scoop here. Nature, oh, what? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, divine Nature Awoken DNA. It features Saki Stolis, the lead singer of the great, great, great Rotting, Rotting Christ. Christ in it. Uh, Enki, that's the title uh, one. And it's, uh, I think, the best one to finish. Uh, this uh, show with we would uh, play the outsiders but it's Speak. 12 and a half minutes yes. or uh, doorways to Irkala which we didn't play because it's not instrumental metal. and not metal Spich. so finish. Spich, we're if gonna you finish want to listen Spich. to more Meets than Kuss. from Enki you are Meets more than Machzor. invited to uh, get it in your uh, local uh, CD store or whatever uh, and uh, to listen to Uh, I believe many more songs from the other albums at the 28th of March, right? Well, we're, because we haven't been here for a long time, we're not going to play a lot of songs from here. Maybe two or three songs because there's so many albums uh, and, to, and yeah, we never played them here, like Emissaries Epigenesis, so we, we're going to play two or three It's of them. It's going to be a big I never said it before, but dish. I'm going to use this stage to say that I have already decided that the wedding song for my wedding is going to be Rebirth of the Nemesis and you're going to come and you're going to play it. That's a deal. My wedding. That's, That's a deal. deal. Gonna, That's a deal. Go. You right. listen to it Yeah. First time, Leo Peleg is going to get married next week with uh, Menechesh, something <laughs> no, like that. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, he's going to get married. Mitzkus. <laughs> Mitzkus. Now, Enki, DNA, bye.
joining us the metal metal www.metalmetal.co.il and also in 106.2 fm and i will say it also in hebrew for the people that listen to the show and didn't understand the word ויהיו איתנו גם בשבוע הבא מטאל מטאל, ותמיד בפייסבוק שלנו, מצווה הפייסבוק הארור של מטאל מטאל, יצטרפו אלינו. מי שלא שומע חרש. או מת. או מלך חרש.